Hello, welcome to FullDisclosure.News and this is another video following our previous video regarding the Nazca mummies, what is, what is being known as the mummies when actually they are in reality uh, bodies that were desiccated with a uh, diatom uh, earth, I think that's what it's called, this uh, white powder that covers those bodies and you know take out all the humidity and that's the way they were so well preserved until our days you know till the recent findings now what we're gonna review is a little more detail we're glad that some of the comments are saying on the previous video that um, we are helping you know, clearing up the confusion regarding this, these bodies. So we're going to keep on reporting on some more videos regarding this body because we need to know the truth. And apparently there's some intention by some unknown, uh, I don't know, entities, should we say, maybe Peruvian government or somebody else, that try, are trying to cover up these findings and are trying to discredit them as being fake, but they are actually real. What we are seeing on the screen now are images from a video that was published by Joyce Mantilla. He's a Peruvian uh, journalist that was part of the first group that had actual contact, real contact, with uh, these bodies and, uh, in 2017 and he is still part of the investigation that is still going on and he was part of that press conference or live stream that we had earlier this week last uh, Monday if I'm not mistaken and we are seeing there the two new bodies that were recently actually presented to the public because I think these were part of the first findings as well, but we haven't had the chance to see them until now. These are two bodies uh, and uh, the scientists that are actually doing real research on them, uh, they say that they are similar in age to um, one of them would be like a child of around maybe 13 years old 10 to 13 years old and the other one is smaller it seems similar to a human child close to maybe six to seven years old of course these are not human uh, the DNA sequencing have not been done yet so we still have to wait for that that takes a long time um, uh, but the the first uh, research that has been done indicates that these bodies might be related to the previous bodies that we saw they have three fingers on feet and hands they have like you see here you know their their eyes are very big and they are like in a diagonal position on the face instead of like horizontal just like humans it's different you know their eyes is, are like in a 45 degree position and one of them has even still their eyelashes can be seen as eyelashes and also one of them on uh, on some of the pictures that we saw seems that seems to have like a different type of uh, fingerprints you know how humans we have like our fingerprints are like circular and these seem to be parallel to the to the fingers which is completely different to humans. Here we see Joyce Mantilla talking to a couple of the scientists that are 
doing research on, on these bodies. And if we go farther down, we see, you know, some of the images from the CT scans that have been taken there. And of course, these images show a lot of details that are different to the humans. And you can see that on the back of the neck, they present some type of metal implant. Uh, the scientists haven't had the chance yet to take samples of these, so they don't know what kind of metal is that or what kind of alloy. So that will be interesting to know in the future. As you can see, it's like a rectangle. It's like a plate that covers the back of the uh, neck. And they also were able to find that this body has uh, a couple of more implants like on the on some a couple of the bones that go that are on the shoulders and you can see them here in uh, this part of the images taken by the CT scan you know these were um, spinning on the screen and we're gonna leave the link to this video so you can watch it yourself this was published, like I said, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's published on Joyce Mantilla's channel. Um, unfortunately, the audio will be all in Spanish, but you can probably um, turn on closed captions and ask uh, YouTube to uh, auto translate for you guys so you can uh, listen to what the doctors are saying about these bodies. Um, one of them noticed that um, the, um, the the bones look similar to the human, but they have different uh, configuration, a different configuration, especially on the chest, and uh, the ribs. The ribs look look different, and they don't meet on the front, like on humans so that that's all the information basically on these new bodies that's all we had regarding the new bodies this is a zoom in for the hands like you see they have only three fingers which is a little bit different than some of the bodies that we saw before and uh, that's basically all, all the information that we have of, on these couple of new bodies because, you know, they, they were just actually presented to the public. I'm not sure because they haven't said that yet, but I think these were part of the um, main finding that happened way back in 2015. But the person that found them didn't want to release him till now or maybe the the researchers uh, or the per the people that are doing the investigations maybe Jaime Maussan or Joyce Mantilla can tell us why they haven't been presented up until now or we are finding more as time goes by we're not sure about this but like I said, I heard before from Joyce Mantilla that the original finding was more than 20 bodies. Uh, hopefully we can, over time, see all of them. Now, going back to the website that I was talking about on the previous video. This is called the AlienProject.com. Uh, and uh, you can go to this website by uh, looking at, you can search on Google, thealienproject.com, or you can go to the-alien-project.com. And like I said before, this website is translated, has been translated to three different languages, French, English, and Spanish. So here, you have a lot of detail about all the bodies. Like if you go to the discoveries, this option on the menu, you can see all the bodies that were presented before. 
and um, you will see here that even the loose body parts are mentioned here the last option we see on the right hand side we see the three fingered hands and if you click on it you will have a lot more detail this is what we were talking about on the previous video like the first time we knew about these strange uh, bodies was before a tra travel agency had like a very old website back in 2015 or 16 that I saw and unfortunately I don't have the link anymore if I find the link I will share it with you guys but here we see a picture of this severe or severed I think is the correct pronunciation um, I'm sorry um, I'm not very familiar with some of these words but this is a hand that was found like that loose you know like cut and you see like that that the fingers are very very long this might belong to a body that is like the big mummy that was found that is nicknamed Maria and if we go to the next picture you will see all the detail inside the bones you know this cannot be faked you know this is like real bone all these um, details inside the bone cannot be faked and a lot of the samples that were taken show that these are biological um, pieces and they and all the scientists that are experts in bones are saying that there's no way that someone can fake all this you know there's harmony between the bones and and the uh, talking about the uh, joints etc etc and this what you're seeing here you know let's go back to the first picture if you see on the right hand side of this body part what would be um, the palm maybe you know the hand there's some kind of metal implant as well that looks like a circle let's go back to the third picture again this is a zoom in of that circle that has been implanted on that hand looks like a golden metal and if you see the x-rays that were taken on this hand that metal metal implant shows right there you know so let's go back to the details about this hand is a type of humanoid hand species of course is undetermined the size is between 35 and 40 centimeters it presents three fingers composed of five or six phalanges with presence of nails as well and this is a very interesting detail the nails cover 80 percent of the distal phalanx which means that the last bone of the fingers the tip of the finger in humans usually our fingers cover only like 50% of our of the tip of our fingers on these bodies their fingers cover 80% of the tip of the finger that's what it means these hands are composed of 26 bones they have presence of skin and tendons that cannot be faked of course and in one case they saw fingerprints as well on the tip of the finger now on these hands uh, they have done uh, c14 tests as well you know carbon dating and they have results from four different labs and one of them said they are like 1200 years old the other one said 
6400 years old the other one said 1080 years old and the other one said 7270 years old uh, the 7,000 was taken from the skin. The beta an analytics said uh, 6,000. So, you know, depending on they, where they were taken, the results are different. Now, this one says that the bone test, carbon dating, said 1,080 years old. Now, I was wondering if these bodies are actually not 1,000, not 7,000 years old, but maybe tens of thousands of years old. You know, what if they were not walking with humans a thousand years ago, but they are even older, like 15, 20,000 years old? We all know carbon dating is not um, perfect. And it can be um, uh, wrong based on where the samples were taken on that piece of body. And the hypothesis down here says, you know, both bone and skin samples were removed from the same finger material that were separated during the initial sampling stage. The difference in the carbon-14 age for the two materials from the same finger sample is therefore highly suspect specifically with regards to the skin sample with a carbon-14 date of 6,190 years older than the same sample bone. The stable isotope and the low PMC support this observation. A possible explanation for the anomaly is that the skin of the individual was treated with a substance such as embalming fluid, maybe, you know, that that has a carbon content of a far older origin than the fossilized material itself, possibly a hydrocarbon. A chemical analysis of the skin material can be performed to characterize the anomaly. And there's a button here that you can click to see the lab reports if you want. And based of uh, DNA analysis, uh, as you can see, one lab says 19% homo sapiens, the other one says 100% homo sapiens, and a third one said 97% homo sapiens. Uh, and the metallic implant analysis says that there's 78% iron, 16% chromium, and 5% carbon. Uh, it's an alloy. Uh, and in studying the context, the disc-shaped metal implant says also that they found 60% gold, 30% silver, and 10% copper. Let's see the detail here. In the study context, the, this gold-silver alloy matches perfectly in the terms of composition with alloys used at the pre-Columbian era. Impurities present such as iron in inclusion also goes uh, in this way. Plausible indicator of the use of a native gold-silver alloy for the design of the object in the absence of completely mastered processes by the pre-Columbian metallurgists for this type of alloy development. It's also plausible that a finishing type gliding by depletion has been applied to the source object of the sample, whose alloy would then be a gold and silver couple alloy characteristic of many pre-Columbian objects and significantly fuller of copper in mass proportion. Very, very interesting. But, well, I don't want to make this video too long. If you are interested in more details about these bodies you can go to the link that we're leaving below and if you want more videos regarding this we can share more 
and we will keep an eye of what are the newest developments regarding these bodies that can change history, the history of the humankind on Earth. Thanks for um, liking the video, subscribe if you want more of this information. That's all for now. I'm signing out. This is fulldisclosure.news. Over and out.